When were you elected to council? In the spring of 1967, I was elected to a one four-year term. And you ran for mayor in? In 71. And why did you run for mayor? Well, for both offices, I think I ran because of the uh, influence of others, primarily our minister who said we should get out of our pews and into the community. And uh, basically this was the predominant reason for <coughs> my running. Hmm. You served for two, one term. One term. As it happened, it was an odd term because we went from a spring election to fall elections for our city council people. And consequently, I had a mayoral term of about two and a half years instead of, instead of the standard two-year term. And why was the election time changed? Well, it became uh, state law that uh, communities or public, other public entities, I guess, could change because it necessitated a special election, really, in the spring. And uh, that usually was the only item on the ballot uh, unless there was a millage for the schools. So from a financial point of view, it was better for us to uh, change and go with the November election, which were the federal election dates and uh, state election dates. So uh, we, we compressed it all into one election rather than two. Um, could you outline the steps to the construction of the, of the new police department building on 8th Street? Well, that evolved like a lot of other things in this world. Uh, basically, the city manager, uh, when I went on council, and, the, and that council had been working on a new city hall complex, which included fire station and police station. And this was to be uh, in the same block that the uh, city hall is in now. And it was, it was going to take, uh, as I recall, the whole block. Well, after we got into it, the cost, uh, public input, we decided this was much too much a grandiose idea, especially with the fact that our present city hall was uh, uh, structurally sound. So then we turned our thoughts to just the police station um, where it eventually evolved to. We appointed a committee, uh, and the committee came up with the present site. Uh, another site was uh, across the street from uh, the uh, present civic center. Uh, but when we got down to the final vote, we decided to take down the existing police station and build a new police station there. And uh, we worked along with the county to put in a uh, court building as well and then tie the two buildings together. Where was the old police station? Um, roughly right where, the, uh, right where the county building part of that complex is now. The police station actually is where uh, the old fire station was. These were two buildings right adjacent to each other at that time. Hmm. Why were there so many public improvement projects and how were they financed? I think that uh, uh, World War II may have been part of this problem. Um, not much in the line of construction was done, of course, during the war years or right afterwards. I think uh, uh, the growth of the community, um, the head core, uh, the growth in, in the advent of HEDCOR on the other side of the railroad tracks ne necessitated uh, some of these things. We wanted to have a fire station on the other side of the tracks because oftentimes, uh, uh, during those years anyway, the trains were much more numerous and uh, a fire truck could be uh, held up and consequently a fire could ruin a company. So one of the first things we did was to, to locate one of the fire stations on the other side to take care of head core and uh, the homes on that side of town. Uh, then w the police station was very small. I recall the pl when, when people wanted to be interviewed, they had to always go into the police chief's office because there was no place else to go. There, as I recall, there was a, a large ante room, the, the, the chief's uh, office, and then the jail itself, and it was very small. And uh, with the growth of, uh, of our area, these buildings came online uh, at that time. As far as the financing them, the details of this I have forgotten because it's over a dozen years ago. <coughs> Were there any annexations or attempts at annexations during your term? Uh, uh, minor ones. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the annexation problem had taken place primarily in the 50s, uh, in 60, early 60s. Uh, there may have been spot annexation due to uh, one corporation w 
being adjacent or contiguous to the city and it wanted to come in for the benefit of the utilities mm -hmm. then um, then there was the vote yeah, but no whole neighborhood no whole sure. neighborhood then at yeah. that time no we mm -hmm. that we had gone through that problem and it had left a lot of bad feelings I might add uh, um, between the townships um, and the townships uh, and the school outside school board areas and our inside school board areas in the city itself now the city got a computer in the late 60s yes okay what was what was the impact of that it was it a dramatic change and well like all computers it's dramatic for those who have to work with them and get them online uh, but I'm sure that it has saved labor uh, since the computer has been used within the city departments. At the time, there is no labor saving, uh, as I'm aware of, with any computer. It usually takes um, more labor and time to get all the information in and online and going. And uh, you don't lose any people, but you don't have to add people then as you grow. Mm -hmm. So the city got it as a as a saver for the future? For the future and for growth and, and I think to be more efficient too. I think it's a, a great savings uh, in the area of, of uh, updating and keeping things up in the, uh, in the city's uh, assessor's office for instance and, I'm, and I, I just know that there, uh, it has helped in many of these in these areas. What downtown improvements were implemented or planned or tried? Well we we did try for a uh, what I would call a whole mall where where you would uh, close off the main street such as Kalamazoo has done but in our deliberations and involvement with the community and the merchants what evolved I really think is better I think uh, we do have movement through our center town uh, we did involve what I would call half a mall which with the beautification and the parking and then at the same time, uh, we did institute a one-way street system, uh, which was difficult. It was a change, and and the uh, people had some people had problems acclimating themselves to this, uh, even to the point that we were taken to court one time to see if this was legitimate, and have another. And I think we had a vote too, a uh, referendum vote, and. Uh, the one-way street systems uh, in, the, in the mall are now viable, and I think it's part of the problem that downtown is so successful. Can you imagine what 8th Street would be with all the trucks on it that go down 7th and, uh, and 9th Street now? Those at one time were going down right down 8th Street, and it was, uh, it was really a mess. But I think that uh, this is a step in the right direction, and uh, I think it has been good for the community. Did the city finance the mall, or was that assessed to the downtown? merchants do you know? that's a good question Phil I don't recall okay. was there any uh, growth new businesses coming in that you noticed after the new mall was put in no but the, it, prior to the time of the new mall uh, the uh, the uh, the city's appraisal of the property values was dropping mm -hmm. and we did have empty stores uh, there was not the optimism on 8th Street, and as I say, the, the value of the property was going down. After we put the mall in, the, uh, the buildings did fill up, and the appraisals reversed and went on up, and uh, thus the city benefited uh, by having a full downtown, plus the fact that, uh, that the buildings were worth more. They were more saleable and at better prices. What was the Youth Commission? Well, back in the in the 60s, uh, during the um, and this was during the Vietnam era, uh, society and the youth, especially, were very much in turmoil. Uh, the the youth were um, were congregating in in large groups and causing disturbances. Uh, the civic parking lot became a uh, the civic parking lot became a place where they all the young people came together. Uh, there was friction between the different the three different high schools and to try to alleviate this we formed a 14 member a youth commission uh, um, asking for volunteers from all three high schools to involve them in something positive or something they could do together I remember one of the first things we did was to work with the JC's 
and we had a rock band uh, out uh, at Riverview Park, uh, which was put on jointly between this group and, uh, and, uh, and the JCs, and it worked out well, and that went on um, <coughs> a couple of years. Uh, also, we had seminars in the fall uh, where, the, where we tried to get the young people to work together at their schools to have vocational um, seminars where individuals from the outside business world and um, the professional world came and, uh, and the youth could come and talk to these people. It was something to get them on the positive track instead mm -hmm. of uh, going to hangouts and creating problems or raiding each other's schools and creating uh, disturbances. So there were real major problems of the of yes, large yes. magnitude. Right, there were. I remember we had discussions with the youth, and then, of course, they wanted uh, one of the things I remember they wanted was a uh, uh, a racetrack so they could go out and race their cars, you know. But this has become quite a, a huge uh, financial undertaking, and it never evolved. But it did give them expression for their frustrations and for their wants and needs. And uh, we did sit down and talk together, which I think is solving, usually helping to solve a problem. You may not get what you want, but things evolved out of it and uh, I think it was positive at that mm -hmm. time. And when and why was it dissolved? Do you remember? I, as far as, that happened after I left uh, okay. council and I'm not aware why. I, I think it's hard because you don't have a continuity uh, of, of these people. We're, we're talking about people from 16 to 22 and uh, some move on to college, uh, some move out of town and take jobs and uh, and they're not in the same group then, and they, they fall into a, a different group at that time. Mm -hmm. These were primarily high school students, senior highs. And uh, why it evolved, I, I think it's a hard thing to keep going. There wasn't much money for them, and it was a matter of, of the initiating some of these programs themselves and working together. And if you don't have good leadership to do this, uh, it, it can fall flat like any organization. Could you explain the swimming pool issue and what came of that? Well, it was not an issue, Phil, so much mm -hmm. as uh, the city was given a gift of $60,000. And with this anonymous gift at that time, it was anonymous, we were, we were told that we had to build a swimming pool with it. Well, $60,000 is a nice start. And it was very gracious. Uh, but we did not, I, I, if there was any problem, it was the fact that we were adding, adding an expense and we had to come up with more money to build the pool. And this was the only problem there was, is that uh, when people give you things, um, this is great. And it's what helps make our community and in, in, in our state because we're lots of times philanthropists will give things, but they usually that's just the beginning of the cost, and you have an ongoing cost that the taxpayers have to pick up. And this was so the concern. The pools presently are under the school system now, or no? Uh, the pool over on what is that? Uh, was voted. This was voted by the city at one time, and it was instituted by the school system. Mm -hmm. And it is maintained by a millage uh, that is voted on. The pool over near Fairbanks, on Fairbanks, was the pool that had a contribution of sixty thousand dollars, and then the city came up. Then the city came up with that, and that's under the city budget, where the other is really under the school, and they okay. they run that pool and administer that system. Okay. What happened with the cable antenna television? How how did that evolve? Well, uh, a number of companies came to City Hall and wanted to use uh, the city's, the Board of Public Works uh, lines to string their, uh, their lines on their city's poles and then run into the house. Uh, we were told at that time that uh, this was a forerunner of lots of things that could happen, especially with a board where uh, homes maybe could even be uh, uh, checked for fire by a, this type of system, we could read meters. So it became a natural that the Board of Public Works would, would do this. There was a committee appointed uh, to talk to the different cable television companies, and as I recall, this boiled down to two table companies, two cable companies. 
and uh, the first thing we became aware of is they wanted to fly this committee to California to check something, and this to us was kind of a bribe. We didn't have to go to California. And other, th other things that weren't quite up to par, uh, we felt, uh, by these companies trying to put pressure on us, we informed, the council informed the committee that if, if any of these companies approached any of us individually or by the committee, other than the information we asked for, they would immediately be dropped. We would have nothing to do with them and they'd be out of the consideration. And that stopped the pressure type of thing. And from that point on, then the committee evaluated what they felt was the best for the city so that they could have a, a cable uh, to city hall, free cable to, to city hall. And, and uh, we felt that that, all things considered at that time, that the, the cable company we chose was best for the city. Mm -hmm. That was in the early 70s, right? Yes. And then mm -hmm. I don't right. recall cable coming into town full force until later. Well, they had to string the wires uh -huh. and the lines, and uh, so this took some time. Took set up and to do it. Yeah, and they had to build. They had to build this, their station and bring in their uh -huh. equipment. And I don't recall whether they were under a time limit to us that they had to do it by a certain time or not. Uh, what type of public transportation system did Holland have before dial ride? We had a uh, we had taxis and we had a we had inner city bus buses which were privately owned and operated. Uh, as I recall, they they both of course went out because of, of increasing costs and the lack of uh, volume. Taxi I think went out first. The bus ran and then we subsidized we the city council I think we subsidized it for a summer to see what could be done and it was it was just not getting the, the, the ridership and we were losing money on it so we closed it up. And then why did the city go with dial ride? Well I'd like a lot of things that you get from government uh, part of it the bulk of it was paid by the by the by the government the higher government we pay for it in our taxes but uh, this is the reason that we went with it. What events took place celebrating Holland's 125th anniversary? Phil, I think there were there were three major events or three times. It was spaced throughout the year, and one of the first ones was in February. Uh, I think there was. Uh, what question are we on here? Uh, nine. Nine. As this was uh, February of 72, we had a, um, uh, a church service over in the Pillar Church on uh, 9th Street. And uh, then in September, we had the, the Queen's daughter was here for an all-day affair. She was in the country and uh, coming to the United States, so we worked the date around her, and we had an outing uh, with her where she... Uh, road to the city we showed her the city in the city hall and she participated in a dedication over at Hope College uh, and then she flew out late that afternoon we had dinner uh, took her and her husband uh, to the yacht club with dinner and uh, it seems to me there were one or two other events but I have s I've since mm -hmm. forgotten these and who organized these? Is there a special committee? Well, I, well, everything that we had and did, Phil, was usually done, the, the mayor or with council's approval, appointed a committee to do things. And I'm sure that, <laughs> I'm sure that Bill Wickers was probably the chairman of this uh, committee. Yeah, so this was his expertise, and, uh, and uh, of course, he had the contact with uh, uh, the Netherlands and uh, he, he, I'm sure, along with, there were, I'm sure, other committee members, and normally on this type of thing, we tried to involve outside people, outside council, but then there was always a, either one or two council people as a liaison back to the, the council members. Why did you request your goals of Holland report be made? Well, I had been on council four years, and mayor probably one or so when we appointed this goals committee. And I have always felt, and still do, that council, most governments react. They don't act, they react to problems that come up and they spend too much time running around putting out fires 
and they're buffeted uh, like a river. You, from one side of the stream to the other, depending on how hard the bank is or how hard the problem is, and then you go to another problem that springs up. And there's hardly any time free for council people or state government or federal government to sit down and say, where do we want to be next year or five years or ten years from now? Uh, you're always under too much pressure to do the things that, that, that the law requires of you and that many of your constituents require of you that your time is filled. So we felt that it would be good if we had long-range goals that we could uh, have the community as a whole look at this. Now this was not a city uh, per se project. This was an area-wide thing and we, we had people from the surrounding townships that were contiguous with us appointed to this committee uh, on, the, on the group and then these this these people broke down into smaller groups and took different sections uh, and came up with long-range goals for, for many areas uh, of our community could you touch briefly on the t on some of the topics covered yeah I th yeah we had uh, a number of areas uh, the cooperation of elected of elected governing bodies was one committee area land and use planning was another one the environment culture recreation entertainment and sports was one committee and then also the final one was health education and welfare which pretty well covers uh, life in general there, there were quite a few people working on this how did you uh tap into all of them and get in contact with them. Did you know most of them or? Yes, I, I knew most of them or if I didn't know somebody from a township, I would get a hold of the township supervisor and ask him mm -hmm. who would be well to be on it. And then uh, I, I asked uh, Ab Martin, who has since deceased, but he was he had retired from General Electric. He was the general manager here. And he, I asked him to be the general chairman. From that point on, these people then um, put themselves into different groups, into these different groups. I wanted to choose minorities. Um, I tried to mix up and get people from different religions of the community, uh, different minorities from the community, and also from the different townships, from p different political entities. So this we felt was a great cross-section of our community in many ways. Mm -hmm. Do you know how long it took these committees to get this booklet together, approximately? Was it done bef by the time you were... Oh yes, I was done by the time I left. I would say uh, maybe a year, Phil. You know, uh, okay. um, do you feel that the trends, or some of the trends predicted in, in that booklet are happening or well I don't think I don't think it's referred to enough and used enough uh, I doubt maybe you can tell me how many have read it in council I doubt if many have that's the problem you see uh -huh. and since it's in it's in City Hall it, it, it's in the library and to me this should be given to every new council member who comes mm -hmm. on as a, as a guide uh, it, it should be read um, this has been used in court at different times you know uh, so it is viable and it is what the people at that time felt the community needed and it's certainly better than nothing mm -hmm. so since council members aren't really looking at it anymore do you feel the goals are being accomplished do you think oh i suppose some of them are some of them sure. that are brought up or that have been going on but yeah but, but under some of the fires that council mm -hmm. people get under uh, these these things all cover those areas um, especially your land use and, uh, and I think uh, one uh, area and uh, in land use planning I think that for instance uh, political entities are great but they have lines and uh, I, I think the problem that we've got at the moment with the uh, with the mall I think that uh, I would have liked to have seen the city hall and the, all of all the surrounding areas gotten together and say, "Hey, where is the best place for the public for this mall?" Mm -hmm. 
but instead each unit wants it because they think they're going to lose some taxes, you know. And uh, but I think this could have been some help and a reference to people who were debating the case. Uh, I think uh, all of these areas are good. The environment, you know, what good's it going to do the city of Holland to um, uh, put their scrubbers in? on the Board of Public Works plan, which costs the taxpayers of Holland something, when Consumers Power isn't going to do it. You know, their stuff floats over us, but our stuff floats over them. Uh, the, it's got to be an area why we live in an area. We don't live in political entities. Mm -hmm. What were the council meetings like? Short, long? Long. We had a great council. I, uh, I look back on, uh, on that time as one of, the, one of the greatest experiences I've ever had. And, um, because we had, uh, I guess you'd say w there was a change in council from the type and thinking prior to our coming on. We as a group were a little younger. Four of us went on council in 67. Our sole goal was to make, you know, things better for the community. Uh, there, was, there was no haggling between council members. We, uh, any one of us felt we could say anything, anytime, and as stupid as some things were, another council member wouldn't make light of it and would, would be considerate of each other. And uh, this carried on um, during my term as mayor, and um, it was just a great time. We, as a matter of fact, we instituted uh, council study sessions. Uh, when we went on council, the, the newspaper was not allowed at the pre- um, at the dinner meeting we had prior to council meetings. One of the first things we did was to invite the uh, uh, newspapers to come and have dinner with us and listen to our discussion. Um, this was over the objections of a couple of the older council members there too who had kept them out. But we felt we had nothing to hide. Uh, the public had, had a right to know and that's the only reason that if, if, if I've got the set of facts and I come to a conclusion and if I give you these set of facts, hopefully you would come to the same conclusion too. And if the public doesn't know the facts, how are they going to come to the same conclusion? They're going to be against you rather than with you. So that was that opened up a new era uh, for the newspaper. We, we got good coverage. They sat in. They didn't ask questions. Um, they were observers. I think it's tougher today. I think the newspaper is uh, much more critical. They're 2020 hindsight. But in that day, they reported what we did. And uh, it worked out fine, and consequently, we didn't have to. We didn't worry about the newspaper. We didn't have television either. We weren't televised. Uh, but uh, they were just a great group of people who were dedicated to doing the best, very best uh, each of us could for the community. And uh, it, was a, it was a nice. It was a nice experience. Would you like to comment on any of the individual council members at all? Oh. Only as I say, Phil, that uh, I felt that we all respected each other. We did not agree, but we respected each other, and a guy could still vote no, and it didn't bother anybody at the end of the meeting or the discussion because, you know, not, not, you're not going to get nine people to agree on everything every time, and that, that was fine, but we respected this, but nobody tried to you know, climb up somebody else's back or get something in the newspaper to make one look better than the other. And I just think that that was the nicest uh, group that I have ever worked with. You met on Wednesdays? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we had study sections on uh, the Wednesday that we did not uh, have uh, council meetings. Did you call many special sessions? No, those were only special needs. If something had to be done or a contract had to be signed, uh, there are very few special sessions called. Uh, we had the study sessions, and then in the fall, we always had a special day or two study session. Okay. For the budget, did you have any long... Oh, yes, all week. All week. Okay. All week. As a matter of fact, to show you how <coughs> naive our group was, when I went to council, when we went to council when we were in 67, we did not see an agenda until we walked in for supper that night at the hotel. And that was another thing we did. We said to the city manager that from no we wanted that agenda the week before. Mm -hmm. And he said he couldn't get it. And I said, we, we said you can get it. Because, you know, to walk in that late and not 
be yeah. able to have thought the thing on a little bit was ludicrous. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't fair. It, it was a way, I think it was a way to manipulate counsel because if you didn't know, you couldn't even ask a sensible question or, or if you did, you didn't give it enough thought. In the, so that we changed. We also went to the idea of publishing the agenda in the newspaper. You know, the public didn't know what the agenda was. Uh, so I, I think we instituted some, some good things, and they must be fairly good because many of them are still in existence today. We've gone one step further on the agenda now and are asking for all the stuff the weekend before, all the documents. I think, I think, think that's right. I think that's right. Yeah, and if you, you can't get it, well, then it can lay over to the next meeting because mm -hmm. you, you just you're too busy not to do it that way. You, you had said that you didn't, the paper wasn't as critical as it is now, so you, you, don't, you don't see any uh, influence that any of the council members had directly? Oh, you, directly? You, oh sure. I think, I think by virtue of the fact the press was there, sometimes people said things for the benefit of the press, but I don't feel that the, it, it the influence is nearly as great as it is today because mm -hmm. you're, you've got not only the, you've got the whole realm of the press, including the television. Uh, but yes, we were affected by them, mm -hmm. but not to any great degree, I don't feel. Would you like to comment on any other items of interest? Oh, yes. Yeah, I have, I have two. Okay. Uh, and, and this was one, one of these was, was the reason I ran was that um, I've always been amazed at, the, uh, at our community as a whole and uh, we're fragmented or and have been more so in the past, I think, between our, our, our reform and the Christian Reformed Church, um, between uh, the townships in the city, in the county, all uh, vying for the spotlight or non-cooperation. So one of the first things we did when we were mayor is I went and introduced myself to each township supervisor. And we called a meeting at Point West. And the city hosted a meal at Point West for all the township boards and the city council. And it was strictly a get-together to get to know each other as people and to realize that we had common problems and we'd better work together. And from that point on, I made it a point every Christmas to go out and see these people. Plus, we started meetings and committees, and as I said before, we, 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 we appointed people to the Goals Committee from outside of the town. And I think this, this has been positive, and I think it has been um, good for the community because uh, we have a lot of common boundaries and thus a lot of common problems. And if we don't, we can't run right up to our border uh, and work on one problem. If they're not going to work on it on the other side, it isn't going to help. I think some of that atmosphere prevails today. Um, and I, one area which I'm sure, Phil, many people don't know or appreciate, but Jay Van Weir in a park township was the one who was instrumental in getting the, the money, which as I recall was between a half a million and a million dollars, to run a pipeline under the channel and loop our water system. And had it not been for our cooperation with, with these people, the federal government wouldn't have given us the money. We didn't institute it. They did. They found it and, and followed through on it. And today we have a loop system, whereas we prior to that we didn't have, so our system is better, plus the fact if a truck could go off that North River Bridge and break that pipe out there, the city of Holland would have been without water. Now it's looped and now we've got a safety valve, so to speak. But this came about through a cooperation between the political entities, and I, th I'm, I think this is a must. The other area of my concern at that time was the minorities, the Spanish minorities, especially in our community. They had problems. Uh, I'm sure unless one is a member of a minority, you really don't know how they think or feel, and I've never been in that position. But I did make it a point to start working with the Spanish people, and Nelson Bosman, um, the mayor prior to myself, 
and started a uh, Humans Relation Commission, which we worked on. We tried many ways to work with the, with the Spanish groups, and they were fragmented. They had different groups because some were born and raised here, some were from Mexico, and some were from Texas, and they all had different problems and feelings and, and wants and needs. And uh, So we worked with these people, and they were appointed to different boards and commission because we wanted to involve them in the community too. So I really think, um, as far as my contribution to the, uh, if there was any, in being on council, were these two areas, was the, uh, was the involvement and the cooperation between political groups and manorial groups uh, in our community. We got the, poli the police <coughs> were having trouble with the college, or the college kids were having trouble with the police. Mm -hmm. So we instituted a deal there, we started basketball games. Uh, at the Civic Center, and we started out first, I think, with the police department and the professors, mm -hmm. which, of course, was great for the college people. Mm -hmm. And then we involved the students, too, begin to play with the police. I think, as I recall, though, the, the college is way ahead of the police department, but that's understandable. But, again, it was a way to mix people together to get them to understand mm -hmm. each other. And, uh, and then there, there were donations taken there, which were contributed to the, to the Youth Commission, I think, or, or maybe to the Human Relations Division of the Police Department. Again, trying to get people to sit down and understand each other. Mm -hmm. Good.